Good evening everyone, my name is Cam, thank you for joining me on our continuation of the RPG Maker Action Battle System tutorial. Let me give you guys a preview of, of what we will be um, doing this tutorial. So let me set the starting position there. and So this is essentially what we'll be covering. You can see the characters moving around and if we press the enter key on our keyboard, a attack animation runs through. And that's it for today. Uh, let's just get started. If you haven't gotten these graphics already, you can go to my blog and I have uh, uploaded all of these graphics onto my blog. You can just download them and import them into your RPG Maker engine to you know follow along. If you want to create your own graphics or create new graphics for uh, the purposes of this tutorial, you know you can do that on your on your uh, own discretion. Now let's go into the database because that's what we'll essentially want to do. We're going to create a new array in our common event tab of our database. I call this ABS attack. And I have the trigger set as parallel process, trigger switch set as battle on. So I just created a new switch, I called it battle on and you know you can name it whatever you want. Now the first line of code here is going to be key input process. You're just gonna, you know, double click on the window here under uh, where it says event commands. Go to page three, and there is a button here for key input processing. You're gonna create a new variable. I named my variable ABSKP. KP standing, you know, stands for key input process or key processing, you know, short. And under options, I just checked the wait until key is pressed. This should be checked by default, but if it's not, you can just make sure to check that. And then under keys to process, all of these will be defaulted since we're using the action key or the decision key, which is equivalent to the enter or space on your keyboard. I'm going to make sure that this box is definitely checked. And remember that the decision keys value is five right here, okay? So actually, let me just delete that. And the next line here is a conditional branch. Again, just double click in this window, go to page three, and there's a button here called conditional branch. What you're gonna wanna do for this one is check variable, and then you're gonna want to use that variable you just created for your key input processing. Make sure the number is set to five. If you're gonna use enter or space or Z to attack, if you're going to use something like shift to attack, make sure that this value is equal to 7, so on and so forth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change members, uh, party members here, and you do that by going to the first page of the event commands window, and there is a option here, the button change party, and all you're going to do is make sure you have a blank party member here without any graphics and you're just going to add that party member into your party. So I just add a specific character, you know, it doesn't have a name. You can name it blank if you want, it doesn't matter, but as long as the graphics aren't there. And then we're gonna do another change party where we'll remove our main uh, character. In this case, Lint. I named him Lint, not Link on purpose. Uh, not sure why, but you know, that's just how I did it. Anyways, uh, then we're going to have a call event attack sound effect. So call events can be found on page 3. There's a button here called call event. Then what you're going to want to do is do common event. You can do map event if it's on the map, but since it's, uh, it's going to be in our database, it's common event. And I named this array attack SE, uh, which is short for attack sound effect. And you can see it right here. We'll go over that in a second. Up next, we're going to have four separate conditional branches, each following uh, the other. So the first one is going to be conditional branch if hero is facing up. You can see on page two, there's a sprite uh, option, hero facing up. That's all it is. We're going to have a show battle animation. Show battle animation can be found on page two, show battle animation. We're gonna create so we're gonna create four of these over here on our animations tab let me just show you how to do that really quick these are the four I created if you don't know how to create these let me just do one for you really fast so I'm just gonna go to a new entry here blank entry 
remember I have these graphics right here on my blog if you need to download them so link attack let me show you how to do uh, the up facing attack animation so I'm just gonna name it up for now since this is an example maybe you'll want something more detailed in terms of the name but so each of these under frame number so each of these is obviously a frame a single frame if your computer runs games at 30 frames per second you're basically going to be going through 30 of these individual frames in a single second so you need to make sure that you have copied and pasted each frame a couple of times just so the human eye can actually see what's going on if so for example if I just delete all this and I only have this frame available you can see if I hit play it just flashes and you can't really see it so I'm gonna copy and paste this frame four times and then we're gonna go to a different graphic here and I'm gonna copy and paste this frame four more times then we're gonna go to a different graphic here the final graphic and copy and paste this frame four times we're gonna change the number of frames here to 12 hit OK and then play a good way to reference uh, the positioning for the f you know the graphics here I have a a battle monster I'm not sure what they call it in RPG Maker I think it's just monster which is actually just the character sprite so if you you can change that by the target drop in here so you can see if I go to different targets you can you'll see different graphics appear in the background all I did was I went to my resource manager here and under monster right here I just imported a hero test animation which if you go to the database and monster you can see right here this is essentially what it is um, you can do this on your own it takes literally five seconds to do just you know copy a single frame um, or a single sprite of that character and import it as a monster and that allows you when you're creating your animations to set the target as that graphic and makes things easier to place you know that these uh, graphics so this graphic for example you know it will appear properly over your character by doing that so anyways if I hit play you can see it runs a lot smoother and you are able to actually see it this time around so I'm just gonna delete that and I'll hit apply you uh, essentially want to do that for the right face down face and left and then going back to the common events you're just gonna for each conditional branch so here is up you're gonna you're gonna use this um, hero link attack up animation for right you're gonna use the link attack right animation down you know and then left is the left attack animation then we're just gonna do a wait command we're gonna wait 0.4 seconds this just allows the animation to run through and finally we're gonna do two more change parties we're gonna add link back into the party and we're gonna remove this blank character so running through this essentially is if the character or the player presses enter on the keyboard we're removing the lint party member so the graphic for this guy his sprite disappears um, and then we have a call sound effect which I'll go over in just a second and the animation for the attack runs through and then after the animation runs through you know 0.4 seconds was a trial and error thing I, I started with 0.3 seconds and the animation was still running even after these guys the party members were returned to normal and his sprite had returned uh, the display had returned on the map so I you know increased it to 0.4 and it worked out perfectly so that's just something you'll have to play with depending on your graphics but for the hero or the attack sound effect all you're gonna want to do is create a variable operation make sure that it's I named it attack sound effect make sure that it's set equal to make sure it's random number it's 0 to 2 and then you're gonna create three more conditional branches if the attack sound effect is 0 then you'll play hero attack 1 sound effect if it's 1 you'll play hero 2 sound effect if it's attack 2 you'll play hero 3 sound effect these sound effects are not RTP but they can be found online just Google 
video game character sound effects or video game character attack sound effect or something like that and you'll be fine uh, make sure this trigger is set to call and that's really it you're set to go I'm just gonna hit OK on your map all you want to make sure you do is right click and place uh, the party starting position right here or wherever you want on this map just make sure it's on you know on your map this enemy sprite uh, this enemy event is just for the sake of you know being there for later uh, videos it's not really necessary for this tutorial but what you really need is this event right here where I just had the menu access for bid which can be found on page 3 so uh, allow disable or allow disallow main menu I just set that to forbid because if I press X on my map I don't want to see that default menu system I'm not a fan of defaults and I have made custom menu system tutorials before they can be found on my YouTube channel you know my blog and my Facebook page too so if you want to learn how to create your own custom menu system go check those out but the main uh, reason why we're creating this event is so we can turn the switch on battle on make sure that it's set to operation turn on and by doing so we'll because this is a trigger switch battle on we'll uh, enable this these uh, event commands to run through and you know it'll work properly that way so that's this tutorial in a nutshell let me give you guys a preview of tomorrow's tutorial if I go to uh, tutorial 12b so I have planned ahead a bit this is what we'll be doing tomorrow you can see that the monsters HP displays overhead and I can still attack if I attack the monster you can see his HP drops until he disappears and dies that so that is what we'll be doing tomorrow I hope you enjoy this tutorial and enjoy the rest of your evening or morning wherever you are take care guys I'll see you later